through the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. We're back. We're ready. It's football time again. The 49ers are ready to make a push. These final six games, horse, make the playoffs. It has to happen. And you know how I know it's going to happen. The 49ers sign someone really big to the practice squad. Really big, as in six foot five. Sean Poindex. Sean Poindex. Yeah! I mean, I'm talking about one step closer, boys. One step closer. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. Um, now on to things that matter for this week. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're going to have all the info for you guys, what we think the 49ers need to do to win this very crucial game against the Rams. Team matchups. Because to be honest, they probably need to go, what, 5-1 and one to have a shot at the playoffs? Yeah. Um, the one probably can't be against the Rams or the Cardinals. Correct. They need to win those games. So we'll start out with this week, and we're here to tell you why they can. Yeah, well, let's get swifty, boys. Let's get swifty. Yeah. Here we go, horse. We're gonna get right into it. We're gonna talk about key matchups. We're gonna start on the offensive side, horse. What is your offensive key matchup that the 49ers need to take advantage of to beat the Los Angeles Rams? My offensive key matchup is Nick Mullins versus the pressure that the Rams are gonna bring. Under you... pressure. <laughs> We saw them as a team and him in particular fold against the Saints when they started bringing different blitz packages, whether it was Demario Davis up the middle, whether it was Chauncey Gardner-Johnson off the edge. Um, They need to definitely do something different this week, whether it's Mullins identifying said pressure and changing the play, whether it's Kyle Shanahan calling different plays. They need to have a different approach to it this week. Hopefully the two weeks they've had off, they've been able to come up with a game plan because the Rams have a very nice defensive front and they're going to bring pressure, especially after what after they watch the Saints film. They're going to know how to affect Nick Mullins. So he's got to be able to respond to that and have a big game. Agreed. But let's be honest. The, the big key matchup for the offense this week is our offensive starters versus COVID-19. Because as of right now... <laughs> It's not. It's not good. We got guys going out all over the place. Okay, no. You know what? They all got caught at ten oh one. That's when Kobe gets you. Darn Ronies, man! I swear. I'm telling sometimes. you, the COVID monster sitting behind the tree. He's as soon as your mask falls off, he's like, "Take that deep breath." I you, get you. you two are so full of jokes. <laughs> nah, I know. Hey, you know what though? You know oh, we're right. You, you, you know we're right though, because we're funny. Yeah. Look at this guy, Mr. Jokey Joke Maker. Jokey Joke Maker over here. But in all seriousness, key matchup for the offense this week is round three. Brunskill v. Donald. Third time's the charm. Except it won't be for Donald. Brunskill is going to be playing center. I imagine Tom Compton is going to get a whole heck of a lot of help this week against Aaron Donald. Because if you don't, uh, Tom Compton is going to not exist anymore. He, he will be completely obliterated and shred into oblivion by the absolute beast of a man that is Aaron Donald. So hopefully Brunskill is able to help out a little bit um, whenever he's matched up with, with him over there. I don't think they'll put him a lot on Lincoln Tomlinson. They're going to try and match him up one-on-one with Tom Compton as much as possible. Bad news though, Rams, we're not going to fall for that, so you're not going to get one-on-one matchups. Kyle Shanahan's too smart. So hopefully Brunskill is able to help out a lot more. The running backs are going to probably have to help out with blitz packages a lot this week, seeing as there's going to be a lot of attention given to Donald. Um, and, and Shanahan's going to have to scheme up a doozy of an offensive game plan this week. But we all know he can get it done, and he's going to need to this week big time. Yeah, the way to um, stop that from happening is going to be the game plan. And that's why my key matchup is going to be the 49ers horizontal offense. Because I think with the outside zone, uh, hopefully with Raheem Mostert back, maybe Tevin Coleman and uh, Jeff Wilson, they can get on the outside and they can cause problems. Raheem Mostert is fast to a a level that no running back on the 49ers is, and he just makes everyone look slow when he's out there. He can do things that other players just can't. And then also with Debo Samuel back, um, the way that they can attack Jalen Ramsey, him and Brandon Ayuk, will be to have the quick passes 
uh, screen passes, um, all kinds of stuff in the backfield, different kind of fly sweeps, just making the defense stretch horizontally. What that'll do is lead to holes where they can get up the middle eventually with some uh, good runs on the inside plays and also um, be able to get down the field and take advantage of the Rams' safeties, which I think is the weakness of the secondary and the defense. So I think that's what will happen. They'll get the ball out quick, make Donald pretty much useless because if you can get rid of the ball quick, then you can cause problems. Also, that will get Mullins in a rhythm and take pressure off Mullins to make big plays. 49ers moving the ball, executing, not allowing the clock to be an issue, but keeping the clock in their favor like they did in the first half against New Orleans. Hopefully they can accomplish it for a full game. And I think having Debo and Raheem Moser back, they could do that. I tell you what, man, if we can win those matchups, that'll be a good day. I think if they can win the matchups that we talked about, the 49ers can mm -hmm. score enough points to beat the Rams. I agree. But um, what about the key matchups on defense, Alex? Key matchups on defense are key. What a surprise. Woo! Who would have thunk it? Key matchups on defense. On a are, roll. I'm, I'm hot right now, boys. Hot. Someone has to be hot. We don't have Quan Alexander anymore, but it's fine. Uh, my key matchup. Emmanuel Mosley versus Josh Reynolds to Electric Boogaloo. You know what this is. It all comes down to the nickel cornerback being able to match up in their three by one sets when they go three wide receivers. I totally was thinking about turbo on that. Oh, geez. You're welcome. You're yeah. so welcome. But the reality of the situation is, is that last time we played, they had the one big play downfield, Josh Reynolds on Emmanuel Mosley. Seeing as Reynolds is the third wide receiver, you're going to have Uncle Sherm and Jason Verrett on the outsides this week, kind of dialed in with Cooper Cup and with Robert Woods. I know they like to play Cup in the slot a lot, and you may see some Mosley v. Cup matchups, but when Reynolds goes in the slot, that's going to be a key matchup because when you have Cup and Robert Woods on the outside getting locked down by Verrett and by Richard Sherman, they're going to be going at Josh Reynolds. He's been getting, I think it's upwards of eight and a half targets a game over the last three games. He's been a guy that that Jared Goff has started to rely on and trust heavily within their offense. So when he's in the slot, Emmanuel Mosley being able to match up well with him one-on-one, -on -one, lock him down, and make sure that he's not getting big plays down the field. And when he is making catches, they're short, not getting a lot of yards after catch. Is going to be crucial for this defense. So that way we can continue to put pressure on Goff and hopefully demobilize him in the pocket. Yeah, kind of building right off what you're talking about. Uh, my key matchup is going to be very similar to the first matchup that the 49ers played the Rams. It's going to be Robert Sala versus uh, Jared Goff because Jared Goff can be confused and he can be fooled. And if you put enough pressure on him at certain times, he can make mistakes. He proved it again against Tampa Bay. He made mistakes. There's besides Tom Brady playing so bad, there's no reason the Rams should have won that football game. Tampa Bay should have won. But Robert Sala did a great job last time and I expect a similar thing. He's going to mix up between zone and man and Goff has a hard time if, if they if they can get a blitz on him and put pressure on him early I think he'll make mistakes I look for Robert Sala to mix it up run some uh, coverages that he's not used to probably some cover six on one side you know and some two on the other and really confuse him and I look for the 49ers to keep mixing it up and with the return of Sherm and with Tarverius Moore playing safety the coverage will be at an all-time high Look for Marcel Harris to play extra in the box in place of Greenlaw and Al Shair and add even more coverage. Um, so those are going to be big in the game. And I think Sala can do enough to cause the 49ers to have the upper hand. And as long as the 49ers offense scores, they can beat the Rams. Yeah, my key matchup is the 49ers defensive front seven versus the Rams run, run game and play action game. It mixes together. What they need to do, they did it last time they played to be successful, is they need to stop the Rams run game in early downs, and that way you limit their play action game. If they're if you're shutting their run down and force them to do regular passing game and make Jared Goff throw from the pocket, you will have a successful day defensively. I said it last time, the 49ers executed it, and the 49ers won. If you let Jared Goff and the Rams offense get their play action game rolling, their run game rolling, they can shred you. They can be a real problem. He's got a lot of weapons to get the ball to. They've got pretty good running backs. So the big thing is first to stop the run on early downs, 
get them in second and eight, second and nines, instead of second and four, second and five, because that's when their play action game can really hurt you. One other question. Mm -hmm. Who do you guys think they use to cover Tyler Higney? I think uh, I think it's going to be a mixture of guys. I don't think you're going to have one guy. I don't think they're going to sit there and play man coverage. I think you're going to see a lot of zone because mm -hmm. Goff will struggle with zone, especially we've seen it, especially the first time they played. So I think you'll see kind of a mixture, just like you saw this last time. You'll see maybe Ward, Moore, and Harris on him, and even sometimes Fred Warner because Warner has those kind of skills. He does. That would be my expectations. He's got tons of skills. He does. <laughs> All the skills. Um, He's got skills on skills on skills. <laughs> he does have skills on skills on skills. If you're enjoying this podcast, go ahead and scroll down. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. Also, go ahead and comment. Tell us what you think the key matchups to the 49ers winning this game are. We will respond. Let us know if we missed a key matchup. And if you're getting sick of hearing him give this same spiel over and over again, you just need to subscribe. Yeah. Just do it. Do it. Yeah. Wow, that's really long. <laughs> Whoa. 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 You know what time it is, guys. It's an extra bold week because we're not just doing this once. We're doing it a second time. Wow, that's bold times two. So we did two wow, that's bolds last time. That's three. It's three per bold predictions in one week. You're welcome, Internet. I'm a lot of boldness. I'm, I, I don't know. I got a little bit really left bold. in the Whoa. little bit left in the tank. But <laughs> Ant, what do you got? What bold take could there possibly be left in your tank for this week? Well, the 49ers defense is getting Uncle Sherm back. That's true. And so what that means is the 49ers are going to cause some turnovers. They're going to cause three turnovers from the Rams. Is, is that Richard Sherman? It is. Oh, it is Richard Sherman. Horse, what do you got, man? We got three turnovers from Ant. This doesn't sound very bold, but if you've watched the Niners the last three or four games, oh, it is. They will average over five yards per carry. Ooh. That's actually bold. The game. And you know what? I'm going to build off that bold prediction with one of my own about this 49ers rush game with all these running backs coming back and my super bold prediction of us finishing in the top eight and rushing. We need all the help we can get. It's going to start this week with 275 yards of total rushing from this team and three tutties. Two you of which. 275? 275 <laughs> yards of incredible, um, amazing running. From that this is not team. really bold. That's really insane. I don't know about that. You, you won't be saying that. You'll all be apologizing to me. It's like I'm insane. On right? Sunday. <laughs> I hope you're apologizing to you me. You realize 50, yard, 50 carries at 5 yards of carries, 250, I'm right? aware of that, okay. but you for, you're forgetting something. We have the fastest man on the planet in Raheem Mostert back. he's the fastest guy on he's the He's the fastest guy on the planet. He's definitely the fastest guy in the NFL, and you know what that means. No, he's not. He's going to hit the edge, and he's going to break the sound barrier. I will say this. He's the fastest guy on the field on Sunday. Agreed. It's true. And guess what? He's going to have, like, I don't want to get no, I, no more boldness. I'm going to... Cut it off right there. Hey, I, I was about to you're get, right. I'm I was just... about to. I was about to turn the corner of boldness if, into if crazy they, town. If they go off for two seventy five, not only are they going to beat the Rams, the rest of the season, every other team is in trouble. I would agree with you, hundred percent. There's one problem though. Still, Mullins I don't... throws for fifty yards. 49ers win because they ran for two seventy five. Sounds That's like right. the playoffs. Last year. <laughs> it it does. does. It does. Hey everyone, the Azorian one Anthony Steves here. It's that time of year again. A time where we take a moment and recognize the things we're thankful for. Like waking up early on this special Thursday and watching a parade. It's not a parade, is it? Oh my god. That special day where we get up and watch a fabulous dog show. That's not it either. A Christmas story? Uh, the Snoopy and the gang? 
don't get mad at me, all right? Don't get mad at me, okay? I do a lot of podcasts, all right? Sometimes I wake up, I have a headache, and I forget which podcast I'm doing, okay? Maybe I'm talking about comic books this time. Maybe I'm talking about pop culture. Maybe I'm talking about history and special journeys. I don't know, I do a lot of things, okay? I forget, all right? It's been a tough weekend, okay? It was a tough weekend, but a tough week. The Undertaker retired on Sunday, okay? The bell tolled for the last time. No more Taker, no more dead man, no more hat, no more coat, no more... No more of that. It's gone, okay? It's gone. It's all in memories now. I've been watching the guy since I was eight years old, okay? When he choked out Hogan. When he was choking him and choking him, and you got Paul Bearer doing the... And it was a fantastic time, okay? But but he's it's done. It's gone. And I need a little time, okay? Don't smile at me. I know wrestling, okay? I, I know we're doing the Niner Cutback podcast. It's football, but don't 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 do that. Don't critique me right now, okay? Before I give you the the yeah, that's right. Why are you staring at my mouth? Anyways, it is Thanksgiving weekend. That means we got football picks for you. And here are my picks for this week's Lock It Up. All right, I'm taking the Cardinals over the Patriots. Mm -hmm, that's right, you heard me. I'm taking the Seahawks over the Eagles in our second round of the bird fight, whatever that's going to be. And of course, fresh off our bye week, I'm taking the Niners over the Rams. That's right, LA, I brought it back. The Rams. Niners over the Rams. Those are my picks for this week's Lock it up. Have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Wishing all of you a great Thanksgiving. Wishing the entire 49er Cutback Podcast a fantastic Thanksgiving. And looking forward to next week when we lock it up again. Stop looking at my tongue. It's lock it up time. Let's go. It is lock it up time. As you can see, Ant continues to balloon his lead. Now, I know he didn't get too much of a gap there between himself and, and Horse, but with Steve's and I continually dropping the ball in regards to picking games in any sort of logical or reasonable manner, I really need this week to go better if I want a chance down the yeah. stretch. So first up, we got the Cardinals at the Patriots in Foxborough. Anthony, what do you got? Normally, it's Foxborough. It's Belichick. True. You know, and, and they, it's always hard to beat him there. Um, I think it is going to be tough for the Cardinals to travel there. You don't, you know, who knows what the weather's going to be like on this kind of a weekend. But let's be honest. Cam Newton can't throw anymore. It's it's ugly. Even when he puts up stats, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals are a better football team right now. And I think that Kyler Murray is just too much for New England, and they will win 31 to 17. Quarterbacks must be five foot ten to go into Belichick's house and beat him. So the Cardinals will lose. I think Belichick has something for him. Is this a is this a wow that's bold? No, uh, New uh, England 21, Arizona 17. Wow. wow! Whoa! Why are you stealing my thunder? Because I thought I was gonna go with the bold prediction. It's not the five foot ten thing that bothers me. It is, is it, Cliff Kingsbury's. Don't, you can't say the other thing. No, it's not the other oh. thing. It's Cliff Kingsbury's inability to get this offense going through the first two quarters. And if you cannot get the offense going against a Bill Belichick schemed defense early in the game, then you're allowing him to prepare in the third and fourth quarter for whatever adjustments you may make. And if the weather is not inclement, it's not beneficial to the pass game for the Cardinals and they have to rely on the run, I have to give the edge to that New England's offense's run game. And if you're going to go you, run you game, be run. watching Cam play, right? I'm aware of this. Hey, I am I'm aware that Cam can no longer throw the ball further than about seven and a half yards on a good day. But if the weather is bad, which I believe it's going to be, that's going to limit the Cardinals ability to throw the football also maybe not as much as Cam. Cam will be hindered to literal screen passes and and dump offs to tight ends on whatever you want to call it. But I, I just don't think the Cardinals offense is going to be able to get going. They have not shown that they can get going early in games and I think that gives an edge to New England in New England. 24-21 Patriots. I'm not 
Um, if he's agreeing with let, me. Let, let me say this, that I hope you guys are right, because that would be nice to see Arizona fall back Correct. to the 49ers. But let me speak directly to Mr. Bill Belichick. It is time to cut Cam Newton. It's over. See what you got with Jared Stidham. This guy's done for the season. Move on. He led the NFL in yards last week. Yep, and they lost. So that means nothing to me. It, so is I do Justin not, I do not, not good then? I don't live in fantasy world. But you know what the Chargers can't do? Win close games. So there saying. you go. That's what I've been saying. So about the him. next the next game we're going to we're going to go to the Monday night football Ooh. matchup that is going to happen. The Seahawks are going to play the Eagles. So we got the Seagulls game going on. Seagulls. And horse, who do you got for the Seagulls matchup? Do you have the Seahawks or you have Carson Wentz and those pesky Eagles, the leaders of the a- or NFC East with all three wins? <laughs> Blowout. Se- Seahawks 38. Eagles 20. That's it? Just 38 to 20? He's ready I to mean, move on. I, I mean, he's right. I wouldn't. There's no reason to really talk about anyone in uh, that deserted wasteland of a conference in the NFC East. That division yeah, is atrociously bad. Uh, the Seahawks are going to absolutely throttle this team. Uh, 42 21. And I think the only reason they get 21 is because at the end of the game, Pete Carroll does what he did to us, in which they just sit back and prevent and are like, go ahead, Carson Wentz. Throw the check down to or Miles Sanders. Or will it be Jalen Hurts? I don't think so. I, I think the, the Eagles are not quite there yet. Doug Peterson is in full blown Alice in Wonderland mode right now. He is, he is fully down the rabbit hole of Carson Wentz being the greatest thing since sliced bread essentially um and, and unfortunately i don't think the eagles are gonna able are gonna be getting away from him anytime soon yeah i think that maybe early on if the eagles can get their run game going they have an opportunity to stay yeah. close for a little bit but i i don't think they have enough on the outside to stop lock it and to stop dk metcalf and i think the i think the seahawks running game will be good enough uh we saw it last week so i think it's for sure seahawks are gonna win against the eagles i'm sorry ralph but 37-17, Seahawks pound the Eagles. If if Danny Derp can almost run for a touchdown against that Eagles defense, Russell Wilson is about to rush for 200 yards and throw for another 350. He's going to put up half a half a thousand. All by his lonesome. Poor Philadelphia. Poor Philadelphia. Yeah. Horst, what do we got well, next? He's going 550. We're talking 1120 of so 1,000. <laughs> Look at this guy, math wizard, math specialist. Fifty-five percent. It's that's accurate. So why don't you uh, why don't you let us know what's next? Accurate. He is very, <laughs> very accurate. Very accurate. What's um, next, sir? All right. So we have the main event of the evening. Next, Alex. Who do you got? Niners Rams for all the marbles. <sighs> I made a bold prediction that the Niners were going to finish over 500 and in playoff contention. And in order to make that a reality, they have to win this game. And they are going to win this game. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be great. But they are going to control the time of possession by running the living poop out of the football. There will be no poop left in it. 27-17, San Francisco. This one is is kind of rough to predict, um, but I've noticed that Kyle Shanahan does a really good job against the Rams. I thought that last time McVay out schemed McVay, and this time I think he'll have a better game plan. But I think the 49ers are getting kind of the right guys back at the right time. The key is going to be can Mullins execute the offense well enough to beat the Rams. And I'm going to go ahead and say that, yes, they can. The 49ers can win this game. I think the defense will be sound. I think Robert Sala's defense has been playing better and better each week. Um, last week against New Orleans was, was fantastic. And I think it'll have another great showing. I think the Rams will get to them. And I think the Rams will almost come back to catch the 49ers. But the 49ers will hold on 34 to 31. 34 to 31. You got to remember, my bold prediction is that the 49ers are going to average 28 points a game for the next six that's, games. That's accurate. I'm, I'm going to do a quick Nick Mullins impression. What is he doing? Green 18. Green 18 said hut. Go ahead, Reed Buster. 
I will tell you this. Nick Mullins will throw for over 250 yards mm. in this game. He'll be lucky if he throws more than 12 passes. He's, no, he's going to he's gonna throw 20 passes for about one yard, and then they're just all going to run. <laughs> good call. It's a good game plan. Horse, <laughs> what do you got? So I kind of think along the same lines as you. Um, Shanahan is... In the last two years, is three and zero against McVeigh. So ever since Shanahan's had good enough talent to match McVeigh's talent, he hasn't lost to him, um, including one this year. I think with all, the, like you said, the pieces back, that once again Shanahan's just got a little bit. For some reason, he has McVeigh's number. I think they start out fast, get up, you know, maybe 14-0, 20 to seven, something like that. The Rams come back, but the 49ers win 27 to 21. It's a good it's a good prediction not like bold it. we can definitely get it done this team has to get it done they do this is this is probably uh i i think it's easy to say this is the most important game of the year um for the 49ers because a loss here and it it's gonna get really dark i mean it could get really dim but a win here and the 49ers are right back in it you know with the bears loss, the rams are i mean the 49ers are right back up they're also with if you know get closer to arizona you have to be in striking distance because when you play arizona in week 16 you need to be either even or one game behind because that's going to be for that final playoff spot and hopefully the 49ers can catch them because i think tampa bay is going to pull away and then it's going to be rams and cardinals which one can they catch cardinals are the closest one hopefully that's who they catch absolutely I believe they can catch him. But the thing that needs to be done right now is you need to scroll down to the comments section and let us know what you think about our Lock It Up picks. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think the score is going to be? And do the Niners have a chance to catch the Cardinals or Rams, one of these two teams down the stretch here and make the playoffs? Let us know in the comments section down below. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. That way you're here every time we post glorious content on this channel yeah and you need to do that get involved in the conversation um, we want to know what you guys think you know it, it's really important that we all talk because it, it's been a tough year but that's kind of the things to do um, now this week what's going to be interesting for the 49ers is going to be keys to watch is who's going to be playing we know they've opened windows for guys and guys are going to be playing and it's going to be um, we're going to have to keep an eye through you know everything that's going on because I think that if the right guys are back it definitely makes the 49ers more formidable and a better team and Kyle Shanahan said you know you can't expect these guys to come in and do everything but I think it is it's a big wave of these guys it's like you know once the the wall the final fight is happening with Thanos and everyone shows up through the thing it's like whoa here we go we finally got enough weapons to win I think that's what happens as soon as Raheem Mostert comes back and Debo Samuel comes back, the 49ers have enough offensive weapons to win, and that's the key. Yeah, I think those two guys coming back will be huge. Um, don't discount the return of Jeff Wilson Jr. He was running the ball really well when he went down. He had a fantastic game that day. Um, he's If they can get any combination of Wilson and Mostert or Coleman and Mostert both back, that would be huge, preferably all three. But that would be huge. Um, looks like Uncle Sherm's going to be back for the defense. That's going to be another big pickup. So, um, yeah, they're they're running around with a lot more ammo than they have been. That's what it looks like. Absolutely running around with more ammo than they have been. And I think another th key thing to watch this weekend is some of these other teams that are in the playoff hunt. Not just the 49ers. If you get a chance to peek in on some of these teams, the Bears who are currently just barely holding on to scrap and with Nick Foles potentially being hurt, they're saying it's not as serious as they initially thought, but he isn't going to be 100% healthy, and if they have to turn back to Mitchell Trubisky, that team could go spiraling into an abyss, the likes of which not many teams in the NFL have seen after such a hot start. I don't think Trubisky's healthy enough to play. He might not be, and if they have to go to the third option, who is the third option? Does anyone know? He went in on... Yeah, I don't know who he is. Can't remember you can't even remember his name. We can remember Ben DiNucci, but we can't remember this Ooh, guy's name. Ben the Bears have no chance if if Foles cannot go and Trubisky is not. The healthy. Niners have just signed Ben DiNucci. Everything. Well, be let's better. be honest. The Bears too also have to play the Packers. They have to play the Vikings. They have to play Detroit. So they don't have an easy schedule either. So Correct. they can come back. 
you know, and, and then, you know, you got Detroit, they're going to lose games. They're not, they're not anything to write home about sitting there at four and six. And so those teams are going to fall back as long as the 49ers can, can win some games. The key is just catching Arizona. If they catch Arizona or LA, but preferably Arizona, just because of the records, they can make the playoffs. Correct. So, I mean, just winning this game one at a time, they have to win this next one. That's going to be so important. And they need to stay healthy. And it looks like they're getting healthy at the right time while other teams are starting to get unhealthy and injured and a little banged up at the wrong times. The Rams missing Whitworth this week. Yeah. Uh, they got a couple other guys on the roster who are questionable. Um, and it looks like they're up in their status is up in the air. If the 49ers can get healthy, if they can stay away from the Rona and not have, you know, dates with Rona Chan after 10 p.m., then there's a good chance that this team is going to have enough strength and firepower to withstand this barrage of just insaneness that has been this 2020 And here's season. something that people aren't thinking about yet because it's so far away. But what happens in Week 17 when the 49ers are playing Seattle? If Seattle doesn't need to win that game, they might sit everyone and allow the and the 49ers may have an easy road to, to maybe get into the playoffs. People haven't considered that yet, but with Seattle kind of pulling away and an easy schedule coming up, the 49ers might have an opportunity there where they can kind of, uh, you know, get an easy one from Mr. Pete Carroll. I thought you were going to say we were going to be celebrating my birthday. We could be celebrating your uh, birthday with a nice win, thanks to Pete Carroll. Maybe pay back for all your allegiance to USC all these years. Pete, do him a solid. Hook, yeah. the, hook the man up. I'll send him some gum. I, I will send you some gum if you decide to sit the team. You know, I, I, We would appreciate Think it. Think about the battles that they've had with Arizona, and it comes down to the 49ers in Arizona. Would Seattle just be like, you know what? I'd rather play the 49ers. I'm, if I'm if I'm the Seahawks, I would rather play the 49ers in all honesty yeah. than Arizona. That is a that is an entirely plausible situation in reality. But the 49ers have to take care of business this week. They got to approach this on a week by week basis, one game at a time. You take care of business against the Rams. We move on. You get prepared for your next battle, and you do it again, rinse and repeat until all that's left it, is it, playoffs. It's this easy. Rams win. Bills win. win. Washington football team win. 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 You know, you uh, got Cowboys win. win. Cardinals win. win. Seattle big win. I'll, th- I'll win. tell you. I'll tell you what, man. With these games Dead left on the win. schedule, yeah, Forty Nine is going to be uh, sitting real pretty. I mean, it seems pretty easy there. You know, it does. Lots, lots of wins. Lots of dubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eat dubs. I don't want to, but okay. That looks your boy Jameis Winston to up with that. Yeah, I never said he was the smartest cat in the world. I do like him though. He also likes crab legs. He does. I just want you to know those were given to him. True story. <laughs> they were given to yeah. him. He got. Yeah. Make sure to check out Tuesday's recap show. We'll be having all the reaction of the 49ers versus the Rams. Hopefully, it's good reaction. But if it's not, still tune in. We're going to be talking about the game. Um, what happened if the key match matchups were correct and where the 49ers go for here from the rest of the season and all the good news Horst. Yeah, we're really excited for this week's game. It's a big one. Come check it out. Keep following our podcast. I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. We all hope you had a great Thanksgiving and we're glad that you tuned in to watch the show the day after Thanksgiving and we hope that you tune in and support the 49ers this weekend in their quest to get themselves just a little bit closer to 500 and hopefully close the gap a little bit on the Cardinals. But, I mean, until then, you just got to wait and see. Their quest for six wins. The good news is we have six more weeks of 49ers football. Anything can happen. You're still in it till the end. We've seen teams do it, so hopefully they can get it done. Right. I'm, I'm all in for the 49ers causing problems. And at least ruining some people's uh, some people's seasons. I would like that. Forever right. faithful. Forever faithful. All right, guys. You know what time it is. Let's chalk another one up. All right. We. All right. It. I'll put my. On the table. Oh my god! No. He spread his apart.
or Play Girl magazine. <laughs> when I say to the full spread, I'm, I mean I pulled my apart. So I just want, I just needed you to know, I spread my cheeks and Play Girl magazine is my concho. <laughs> my concho.